COVID-19 continues to destroy enterprises, jobs, and livelihoods. The Central Organization of Trade Unions, led by my brother Francis Atuoli, and the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection, under the able leadership of our CS, Honorable uh, Chelugui, for the bold action we took together to enter into a memorandum of understanding to guide the labor sector during these unprecedented times that we are in. This agreement has enabled employers to do everything possible to retain our workers in employment during this difficult time. Your Excellency, before I conclude, because I, I am aware that this is your day, we really want to hear what you'd like to share with us and ours is just to appreciate this opportunity you've provided. I would just like to highlight three important areas. Firstly, employers are committed to working together with your government to help Kenya build back better, faster, and stronger from the pandemic. Secondly, employers support your efforts to ensure that Kenya plays a leading role in regional and continental integration. The full implementation of the East Africa Common Market Protocol and the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement will unleash employment and wealth in Africa to fulfill the aspirations of our youth who are in dire need of employment and something to do. Thirdly, Your Excellency, we understand the enormous challenges that the country is facing and we continue to pray that God would give you wisdom as you lead this country through these challenging times. But based on our experience as social partners, we wish to advocate for social dialogue and accommodation as key strategies for overcoming these challenges. So we call upon all the political players to embrace social dialogue and tolerance, especially as we head to the general elections next year. Let not the elections and political reforms divide us, but rather let them unite us. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. God bless our beloved country, Kenya. Mheshimiwa Rais naomba sasa nimwalike Katibu Mkuu wa Chama cha Wafanyakazi ndugu Francis Atoli naye azungumze kwa kifupi. Karibu ndugu. Thank you very much. Uh, you are excellent the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander in Chief of our Defense Forces. Your Excellency and social partners who are here, led by our Minister, Sister Jacqueline Mugo, uh, led by our Minister and Sister Jacqueline Mugo. Foremost, Your Excellency, let me take this opportunity to humbly and with humility thank you for according us this rare opportunity to be here with you on behalf of the Kenyan workers. Your Excellency, we remember. This is the second time for us to be here. We were here last year in this abnormal situation caused by this pandemic. Your Excellency, allow me to specifically recognize and appreciate you for your tireless efforts in protecting the lives of millions of Kenyans and at the same time ensuring that our economy remains sustainable during this turbulent times of COVID-19 pandemic. The economic havoc wrecked by the COVID pandemic remains unprecedented, unprecedented and has left millions of workers with far much less to celebrate. However, we should not despair and go to Kenya as an umbrella workers body in the country We'll work closely with your government to make sure that we steer our economy to very high heights in order to address the job losses that we have all witnessed as a result of this pandemic. 
Equally, Your Excellency, we would like to thank your government and specifically the following ministries, namely the Minister of Labor and Social Protection, Minister of Health and the Minister of Interior, and the coordination of national government for providing an enabling environment for our organization and our affiliates to conduct successful elections under these abnormalities. Uh, abnormalities. Our special thanks go to Honorable Dr. Fred Matian, Honorable uh, Senator Mutai Kagwe, as well as Honorable uh, uh, Simon Chedugui, our minister who is here with us today. Your Excellency, briefly, I want to talk about Labor Day. Most of our young men and women, they might not know why we are celebrating this important day. Labor Day, Your Excellency, has a unique history dating, dating back to 1st May 1886 when trade unions in the United States of America decided to go on strike demanding that workers should not be allowed to work for more than eight, work, eight, eight hours a day. The strike was followed by a bomb blast in Chicago Haymarket Square, popularly known as Haymarket Affair, on 4th of May 1886, making May 1st to be a very important day. And this was followed by two years later, Your Excellency, in Paris, where there was an international meeting of both employers, workers, and governments to declare this day an International Workers' Day. And the purpose of this day, Your Excellency, is not to celebrate but to reflect on what happens at our various working places. These protests were instrumental in establishing eight work day in the world, and since then, 1st May has been celebrated throughout the world. Here in Kenya, Your Excellency, this is of Labor Day, and by large, the labor movement was equally not an easy one, having evolved through difficult situations created by mainly by the then colonial government, which persistently defended employers in order to avoid seeing a strongly organized labor movement or employers organization at that particular time. However, with the pressure mounting in the British colonies, there was a change of attitude by our colonial masters, and this resulted in Kenya here to have an, uh, an ordinance, uh, trade unions ordinance in 1937, uh, which allowed formation of trade unions, followed by the first trade union to be formed in 1940, led by no another person other than Mark and Singh, who equally was close to the African uh, uprising leaders or leaders who led revolution and change in our country at that time. He associated very much with people like Chege Kibachi at that time and people who were serious on seeing that Kenya was a free country. The situation grew from bad to worse and in 1947, Your Excellency, we had a first strike in this country where 15,000 workers out of 20 workers went on strike in our Mombasa city. This strike paralyzed the whole of Mombasa and created an awareness of what a trade union was. The strike was led by no other person apart from uh, 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 other than Chege Kibachia who had studied as a labor officer and eventually he became a trade unionist. Your Excellency, being as brief as I want to be, with the emergence of more unions, a national trade union center was formed called the Kenya Federation of Registered Trade Unions in 1952, led by the late Agre Minya. This was a precursor of the Kenya Federation of Labor, uh, which was internationalized by no any other person uh, 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 other than the late, the most African celebrated labor leader, leader uh, Joseph Thomas Moyer. In 1952, declaration, uh, uh, the, imagine, the declaration of a state of emergency by the colonial government caused a great setback uh, in this uh, area of so of registration of so many trade unions. 
Your Excellency, I must mention th at this point that Africa, Asia, and Latin America attained their independence through the struggle of trade unions. In our history, Your Excellency, let me remember a few trade unionists who fought alongside our freedom fi fighters, including our founding father of this nation, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, who was part of the local government workers' union, now the county government workers' union. And those who are Makan Singh, Cheke Kibachia, Agre Minya, Tom Joseph Mboya, Fred Kubai, Vicky Washira, Ratbu Hussein, Pio Gama Pinto, Ochoro Gae Makanyengo, uh, Martin Shikuku, Clement Lubembe, and Dennis Akumu were instrumental in attaining uh, of our independence because they are the agitators of that particular time. And across Africa, Your Excellency, because I also speak for Africa as the, as the president of the Organization of the African Trade Union Unity, I must remember people like John Tetig of Ghana, Ahmed Lil of Tunisia, Paul Humphrey Luand of Uganda, Rashid Kawa of Tanzania, Abdullah Diallo of Guinea Conakry, Demba Diop of Mali, Jay Naidu, and Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa, who is now the current president, all fought for our continental total independence through the trade union movement. It was until in 1963, Your Excellency, when our founding father, Mse Jomo Kenyatta, declared this day in Kenya to be part of the global uh, trade union uh, uh, international labor day. And even though your Excellency, after having had this day and several trade unions, we still have a lot of hurdles to make sure that workers are properly protected. We have employers who are still bent in maximizing profits without, reg without due regard to what workers do in their various places of work. Your Excellency, now let me briefly talk about COVID. I thank you, Your Excellency, and your government for having met a budget, a budget allocation during this time of COVID to the agricultural sector of our economy by supporting exporters both in the tea and floriculture industries, while you made sure that, the first, that first and foremost there was a provision for cargo space of their exports. And you made sure under these trying moments our exporters can be able to access our ports for uh, uh, for, for international markets. I want also a little bit to touch on what Sister Jacqueline Mugo has said, what your government did. And I want to thank your Minister for Labor and uh, we call upon your government to continue supporting the social tripartite partners, namely the Federation of Kenya Employers, COTU and government through the Ministry of Labor. Your Excellency, as it has been properly put, when we realized that the COVID pandemic was a big problem, these organizations developed and signed a tripartite agreement under the chairman of uh, Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Simon Chilgu, on 30th April 2020. This memorandum of understanding, Your Excellency, provided for job security and assured worrying workers that those who might have been laid off during this pandemic period will not lose their employment when the situation returns to normal. This is a, a very big milestone in our country and very, very few uh, tripartite and social partners uh, went and uh, realized this. Your Excellency, uh, I cannot finish my speech without mentioning some few things here. Like secondly, Your Excellency, what has uh, a problem that our country is facing and a problem that you are fighting, Your Excellency? This is a vice known as corruption. It is through this vice that we have lost our forest cover, hence attracting massive uh, 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 deforestation, which has largely interfered with our environment. It is through corruption, Your Excellency, that we cannot obtain strategic medicine and quality medical cover in our public hospitals. 
Your Excellency, it is true corruption that those charged with the responsibilities of restructuring our cities cannot achieve their desired infrastructure development changes and keep out the menace of informal uh, 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 transport, hawkers, and other things that uh, do negate the principles of the international cities all over the world. But I want to thank you for your own keen interest in making sure that the infrastructure in our city of Nairobi is being addressed, particularly the Mumbai, what is happening on Mombasa Road. We do appreciate your excellency and the efforts you are trying to make that we have a link, a similar link between Nairobi and Mount Summit. It is through corruption that we lose so many people on our roads on daily basis because of allowing crowded and unroadworthy vehicles that have also denied Kenyans the opportunity to have an organized public transport system in our cities. Your Excellency, you realize that it is only Nairobi where workers suffer from left and right under the torture of the informal transport and it is the only city now around that has no public organized transport. We thank you for what you have done to allow the railway system to start working in this city. It is through corruption that our students have continued to be sold stolen examinations and answers and receiving fake degrees from our institutions of high learning. It is through corruption that we cannot attract both foreign and domestic investments in this country with the obsession of demanding 10% or more on a such investment and this cares those who would be people can create employment and supplement to our efforts of development to invest in this country. Your Excellency, on our procurement systems right away from the county governments to the national government, this area has become, it has been infiltrated by an scriptless people known as entrepreneurs and for us to develop in this world of digital and e-commerce trade, we appeal to Your Excellency not to get tired with what you are doing to fight this menace. Kenyan workers support you and you will continue, we will continue to support you. And on that, I also say, and I will repeat, President Usitishwe. Now, Usitishwe, this equally reminds us that unless we support you to stop corruption, we will not take off as a nation economically and development-wise. Your Excellency, your efforts and what you are trying to do, both at the level of governance and at the level of managing our affairs, will continue to be supported by Kenyans of goodwill. Your Excellency, I would like to remind you that in 1968, the founding father of this nation, Mr. Jomo Kenyatta, gave a grant of US dollars, five million, to the government of Malaysia, since Kenya was far ahead in terms of total GDP and its economic performance compared to the governments of Singapore, South Korea, now Vietnam, Malaysia, Taiwan, uh, South Korea, and other African countries that have since overtaken us. We hope and trust that in you we can realize the dreams of our forefathers. Your, Your Excellency, before I sit down, as a champion of social justice and as a champion of fairness, and as, cha as a champion of good governance, I must say something about BBI. Your Excellency, I cannot and end speech without talking about building bridges initiative. And let me on behalf of Kenyan workers inform you that at our recently concluded 14th call to Kenya Quinquennial Conference held at Tom Boyer Labor College on 9th of April 2021, one of the key resolutions made was that as Kenyan workers, we will stand with you, we will stand with the handshake team led by Your Excellency, together with your brother, the Right Honorable Prime Minister Raila Mododinga, in ensuring that one of the best legacy you can leave behind for Kenyans is a new constitution that addresses the pertinent areas of our governance, which normally causes you and cry immediately after the general elections. And the recipient, those people who suffer after elections year in and year out, are workers, women, 
and children. Lastly, Your Excellency, if I go to the last comment, there is something uh, I, I want uh, your government to assist us. And I want also to ask the press, which is before us here, to be a little bit patriotic. Don't see when somebody issues a statement concerning a particular company. And you move fast to ask that company to advertise with your newspapers so that you can kill that story. And sometimes this story is geared towards protecting your rights. We have a young man and we admired him when he took over our own Kenyan, when he took over Safaricom. And he's a man who is very much experienced. He has come up with a very good program to spur that company to very high heights. But there are areas that he needs to be told these areas are not good. You cannot ask the in-serving officers to reapply when you are making changes. You can only shortlist them. You can evaluate them. If they are not fit to fit in the new system, you ask them kindly to retire and they go home. But when you ask the whole lot who has built over the years a farm farm like Safaricom that reapply afresh, you cause anxiety to the families, you cause uh, uh, stress which ends into depression. He must be advised and he must be advised. Lastly, Your Excellency, we have even also the other areas and Sister Jacqueline should help us. Some supermarkets are our own supermarkets. And you find a young, a young lady uh, or a young man standing from morning to evening. This causes a lot of worries. There must be one hour rest in every supermarket. And this is what caused the world to have this an International Labor Day. Lastly, Your Excellency, we can't ask for wages. We know the situation that we are in. We understand where we are. Me and Sister Jacqueline, we know what has befallen the world. We know the global economic performance. We are monitoring. We are seeing. But what we are saying, Your Excellency, and also what I am appealing to the Federation of Kenya Employers, is to make sure that some few areas of adjustments, particularly to those other companies that are doing well. And as I said, the President has supported both employers, manufacturers, the people in the agricultural sector of our economy, with hard cash to make sure that jobs are cashed. But then we can still meet and make some minor adjustments here and there when it comes to terms of either minimum wage or the negotiated collective bargaining agreements to make sure that those who are serving under these difficult situations, their pockets are not depleted because people are really suffering. This is the appeal I can, and I know you, President, uh, there is a story that I have not told Kenyans. If you happen to have a problem and you move close to our President, even a problem of funeral, and you tell President, I have a relative or a neighbor who has lost a loved one. But these people cannot access to have even a coffin or something to make sure there is a home send-off of their beloved one. What the president, our president does, first of all, is to pull out his handkerchief. He starts shedding. This is a real story. Or somebody cannot be able to pay school fees. You have been so sympathetic to Kenyans, and you have a chance, you can still devise a method in your own wisdom to say how can we be able to little bit compensate our officers, our doctors, our medical students, or those people who are there, all those people who are serving, and those factories and companies that are serving under these difficulties. How do we also be mindful of their own welfare? as the, uh, the late president used to tell us, that your, your hand to assist somebody who is a neighbor is a service to God. I want to leave it there, your president, and I want once again to thank you and to assure you that Kenyans will have to stand with you. 
and to assure you, maintain the handshake. This is what created the peace where we are today. Don't relent on BBI. It is us as workers who said we must revisit our constitution. And I want to appeal to members of parliament. They should not look at the, those areas. They will still again time to time be looked at in future. Let us have a new constitution. Let us have a peaceful country, Your Excellency. Let us have you around and enjoy the support, as I've told you, as workers. It is on a resolution that we will support your initiative to make sure Kenyans have a peaceful document in which governance is addressed. I thank you. Asante sana ndugu Atueli, katibu mkuu wa chama cha wafanyikazi nchini. Asante kwa ujumbe huo. Mheshimiwa Rais, nikubalia sasa ni mwalike waziri wa leba na hifadhi au ulinzi wa kijamii ndugu Simon Chalugui ili aweze kukualika, uweze kuhutubia taifa. Karibu waziri. Your Excellency, the President and commander in chief of our defense forces honorable uhuru mungai kenyatta secretary general of confederation of trade unions in kenya brother dr francis atwoli the chief executive officer federation of kenya employers sister jacqueline mugo the senior government officials present fellow workers your excellency we are very glad to see you here today and for honoring the invitation of Kenyan workers to preside over the commemoration of this day, which is very important in calendar of workers worldwide. Labor is the most important factor of production, which contributes immensely to faster development of our country. And in the three M's of manpower, money, and materials, manpower stands very high. As a country, and with your guidance, Your Excellency, we have continued to invest heavily, the, heavily in the Kenyan workforce. The Kenyan labor force, while putting in place structures and mechanisms for protection of Kenyan workers. Your government has continued to encourage structured negotiations between workers and employers on a wide range of employment and labor-related issues and in the spirit of give and take. It is in this spirit that the tripartite partners are working on a wage determination mechanism that addresses the realities of the labor market while seeking to correctly reward workers' efforts and improve our competitiveness. Your Excellency, let me thank you on behalf of the majority of workers for the kind gesture you extended to them last year when you ordered the removal of income tax for anyone earning less than 24000 per month and reduction of the income tax for those earning more than 24000 from 30% from 30% to 25% a survey we carried out as minister of labor and social protection on informal sector skills and occupation showed that most of the informal sector operators earn less than 25,000. This tax repeat, Your Excellency, has therefore positively impacted on their incomes. Your Excellency, also allow me to appreciate the support you have continued to give to the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection and the opportunity in carrying out and serving Kenyans in executing this mandate. This we are very grateful as a ministry. This support has led us to put in place several measures aimed at improving the imp and the implementation of projects and programs within the labor and employment sector. I will highlight just uh, two. The ministry has undertaken certain initiatives to, sp to prevent the spread of COVID-19 at workplaces. This includes undertaking surveillance at workplaces to ensure compliance with government protocols and capping the spread of coronavirus. 
The ministry has also developed workplace safety guidelines in form of advisories to help both employers and workers to assess risk and adopt procedures that mitigate the COVID-19 risk at workplace. And through the Directorate of Occupational Safety and Health, Your Excellency, uh, we are working uh, through multi-agency approach to, to in improve the bill that establishes this directorate. Your Excellency, in April 2016, the government established National Employment Authority to enhance the institutional framework for employment promotion. This, it, it, since its information, the authority has achieved considerable milestones in employment promotion. One of the areas where the National Employment Authority has put a lot of effort is streamlining the registration of employment agencies to protect Kenyan workers seeking employment both locally and abroad. And I want to thank you, uh, Your Excellency, most sincerely, because on 25th, your cabinet has approved a raft of measures to strengthen the welfare of workers both in Kenya and even those Kenyans seeking employment abroad. Majority of the youth graduating from our training institutions lack exposure to the world of work which continues to disadvantage them by diminishing their employability. In order to address this challenge, the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection has developed national internship policy which will provide the necessary framework for implementation of internship programs both in public and private sector. Our youth stand to gain from this noble initiative. Finally, Your Excellency, the children of Kenya are the future of our country. If we protect them now, we will have better Kenyans tomorrow. Towards this, Your Excellency, the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection would like to thank you for spearheading the approval of the Children's Bill by the Cabinet after more than 15 years of negotiations between various stakeholders. This milestone draft bill is now before the two houses of parliament for debate and legislation. Your cabinet also approved the community registration groups, which has gone a long way in creating employment and empower the members of respective communities in mobilizing resources. Your Excellency, in conclusion, on behalf of the Kenyan workers, I assure you of the continued commitment and dedication of our ministry and our social partners in implementation of projects and programs for realization of our national aspirations. With these few remarks, Your Excellency, may I ask uh, fellow workers to be upstanding to welcome Your Excellency to speak to Kenyan workers and address our nation. Thank you and God bless Kenya. Your Excellency, the President. Thank you, Waziri. Please be seated. Thank you very much. <coughs> Madam Jacqueline Mugo of the Federation of Kenyan Employers, Brother Francis Atuoli, Secretary General of KOTU, and to all fellow Kenyans participating with us today, let me say what a great pleasure it is to join all workers of Kenya and indeed the rest of the world to commemorate this International Labor Day. On this day, we come together to celebrate our workers as creators and makers of things and to recognize the best efforts of their labor from factory to factory, from field to field, from office to office, the labor of their hands has without doubt transformed our country from year to year and without doubt from generation to generation. It is a fact that without labor there can be no prosperity. As one philosopher noted, labor is what brings the difference to everything. Evidently, and without a doubt, labor is the game changer of all progress. And that is why today we celebrate the fruits of our labor with thanksgiving in our hearts 
and indeed as instructed by our national anthem. Fellow Kenyans, when I addressed you on this occasion last year, and my friend Brother Atwoli will remember, the first wave of the COVID-19 had just hit our country. Little did we know at that time that one year later we would be celebrating Labor Day under the third wave of this virus. Fourteen months later, after our first COVID case was reported, our economy has slowed down. Without doubt, our informal sector has shrunk. And in the hospitality sector, some enterprises have literally closed. Similarly, the cogs in the manufacturing sector have stopped turning as fast as they did. And indeed, it is not lost on me that the people most affected by these unfortunate events are the workers of our country. But in these unprecedented times, and unprecedented not only in Kenya, but globally as well, Kenyans have a way of intu intuitively pulling together and coming up with innovations and building resilience. Indeed, our founding fathers ingrained our national motto of Harambe or pulling together into our national psyche and I am particularly grateful to the labor movement led by Brother Atwoli for keeping the spirit of Harambe alive during the COVID crisis. The labor movement in Kenya has not only pulled together the workers during the dark moments of this pandemic, it has also been a robust co-worker with government in trying to contain the crisis. And this is because it is during moments of crisis like COVID that those who suffer the most are workers, women, and children. This ability to step in and fill the gap during times of crisis is not something that is new to the labor movement here in Kenya. We have heard that when the colonizers banned all political parties in the mid-1950s, creating a crisis of political expression, the labor movement in Kenya stepped in and continued with the struggle for our independence. It became the funnel for political agitation, and when the leaders of the independence movement were detained during the emergency period, the trade unionists quickly stepped in and held fort until they were released. Undeniably, it was on the tide created by these acts of selflessness that some of our founding fathers arose. These included Tom Boyer, Clement Lubembe, Arthur Achuodo, Dennis Akumu, Martin Shikuku, Markham Singh, Fred Kubai, Bildad Kagia, and J.D. Kali, amongst many others. However, the effort by our labor movement to offer leadership and pull together the country in times of crisis did not stop in the 1950s. Many may recall that during the post-election violence of 2008, our labor movement was the first one to begin mediation efforts between warring divides. Indeed, their efforts to resolve the crisis had been recorded way before the arrival of the first international mediator. This uncelebrated role of the labor movement in Kenya must be put on record, more so their ability to act swiftly in times of crisis. And for that, as a country, we are grateful. Asante sana. Fellow Kenyans I have submitted in the past, indicating that a crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic represents also threats, but it also represents opportunity. 
Some get paralyzed by the hurdles and they unfortunately end up doing nothing but complain. But those who see opportunity in the face of challenges also produce innovations. And because there are no workers without industry, I would like to take mention of two innovative industries during the past 14 months of COVID. The first one is Hella, Hella Clothing Limited. When the COVID pandemic hit our country, this EPZ company quickly discovered the opportunity and switched to the production of PPEs and fa face masks. By rejecting paralysis and embracing innovation, this company saved over 300 workers from joblessness. As Hella Clothing Limited was making this transition, the World Health Organization indi indicated that there was a monthly deficit of 89 million masks globally to fight COVID-19. Faced with this opportunity, Hella was swift to produce 10 million masks during the months of April and May. This meant that a single factory in Kenya manufactured one out of 18 masks globally to close the World Health Organization deficit. The second industry I'd like to mention is Betty Investments, a Kenyan apparel company based in Akuru, where the COVID pandemic hit. Betty Investments retooled its productive capacity due to the fall in clothing demand from the West. Over 800 workers stared at unemployment due to falling demand from their partners, especially in the US and Europe. By July of 2020, however, Betty began producing PPEs and masks. Their production capacity of PPEs shot with speed to 10,000 PPEs daily. And instead of firing its 800 workers, Betty actually hired another 300 workers to cope with the heavy demand, not just from Kenya, but also from our neighboring countries. Today, Betty Investments is responsible for manufacturing 80% of all PPEs available in Kenya and over 70% of the PPEs that are being supplied to our surrounding countries. The success of these two companies under mention was made possible because they were not paralyzed by the COVID crisis, but instead seized the opportunity and created innovations. But above all, their innovations preserved the much needed jobs and even created new ones. Fellow Kenyans, I have spoken about swift action of the labor movement and the innovative ventures of the employer in industry. But now I will turn to the unbroken spirit of the worker. I have severally led our nation in celebrating our doctors, our nurses, our clinical officers, and all medical support staff who have worked without tiring for the past 14 months of this pandemic. Their current life of sacrifice and danger is without doubt a true testament that nothing is impossible. And they have taught us that if we put our hearts and minds to the service of others selflessly, we can indeed find our true happiness. To honor the sacrifice made by our health workers, therefore, I believe that we as citizens must exercise continuous civic responsibility. We must not overwhelm our health system by acting irresponsibly and raising the rate of admissions into our hospitals unnecessarily. Let us repay the sacrifice of our workers with civic responsibility. I lead the nation in celebrating our law enforcement and administration officers on this Labor Day also. These are probably the most unappreciated workers, but the most stretched by the COVID pandemic. We as a caring nation have noted their service, their dedication, 
their sacrifice and we thank them for it. So indeed, I lead the nation in celebrating the invisible workers of our markets during COVID. They are the invisible suppliers who have kept our nation running in the face of difficult times. From the truck drivers who deliver our food from far to the women in Marigiti who have distributed food continuously from 4 a.m. in the morning to the border border riders who connect the delivery dots to the digital sellers who make this possible. And I want to thank you all. And fundamentally, I wish to thank every Kenyan whose unsung efforts support our resilience against the challenges that we face today. Fellow Kenyans, let me end with some reflections on our current COVID-19 status as a nation. When I issued the Second Public Order Act of 2021 in March of this year, announcing the obtaining containment measures, our COVID caseload in Nairobi alone was 56,815. This caseload has now gone down to below 15,000 for the month of April, signifying a 74% decrease in infections in Nairobi. Data from our medical experts suggest that the same trend in the zoned areas we put on lockdown during March 26th of this year, after one month of lockdown, the COVID case load within the zoned areas has come down by 72%. In other areas of the Republic, the COVID caseload fell by 89% and in, Momba in Mombasa and 90% in Busia between March and April of 2021. Given expert advice that we have received and on counsel of the National Security Council, as well as the National Emergency Response Committee on COVID-19, I therefore on this day issue public order number three of 2021 as follows. That one with regard to the zoned areas comprising of the counties of Nairobi, Machakos, Kiambu, Kajiado and Nakuru, it is directed that the cessation of movement into and out of the zoned areas be and is hereby lifted. Two, that the hours of curfew in the zoned area are revised to commence at 10 p.m. and end at 4 p.m. with effect from midnight on this day of May 2021 until otherwise directed. Three, that in-person and congregational worship shall resume in strict fidelity to the guidelines issued by the Interfaith Council and the Ministry of Health However, the attending congregation is still capped to one third of the capacity of the place of worship. And that for the operations of restaurants and eateries in the zoned areas shall resume in accordance with the guidelines issued jointly by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife and restaurants are indeed encouraged to utilize outdoor spaces to maximize on physical and social distancing. For the entirety of the Republic of Kenya, it is directed as follows, that one, all our educational institutions in all levels of learning shall reopen in accordance with the calendar issued by the Ministry of Education, and two, that the resumption of sporting activities shall be guided by the regulations to be issued by the Ministry of Health jointly with the Ministry of Sports. Three, that all bars in the territory of the Republic of Kenya are to operate until 7 p.m. And I repeat, 7 p.m. Four, all employer, employers and enterprises are encouraged to allow their workers to work from home with the exception being with respect to employees working in critical or essential services that cannot be delivered remotely. 
and five that all hospitals are directed to limit the number of visitors for hospital for hospitalized patients to one visitor per day to one visitor per patient per day and six that the prohibition against political gatherings is extended until otherwise directed and seven that all other containment measures and guidelines that are not expressly set out in this address remain in force and shall be enforced dutifully. Fellow Kenyans, these measures that we institute today and all other interventions that the government has made over the last 14 months are geared towards responding to the unprecedented health threat that has gripped the world. I want to once again reiterate that we have instituted this, these restrictions with no joy. However, as a government with a responsibility and the mandate to protect the lives of Kenyans, we must fully acknowledge that that responsibility that is bestowed upon us calls for action to secure the lives of our people. Over the last year, we have witnessed challenges in other parts of the world where the surge of infections has nearly led to the collapse of some globally acclaimed health systems. We see that happening even as we speak today. In moments like this, we are all called upon to make sacrifices for one another. For the collective good, it is never, and I repeat again, never the intent of government to make life difficult or unbearable for any of our citizens. Finally, as we prepare for the reopening of schools, let me emphasize again that our staying power in the fight against this pandemic is our greatest arsenal. I say so because if public responsiveness to health protocols goes up, then the possibility of further de-escalating the containment measures is within reach. Sadly, however, the opposite is also true that a surge of infections will also necessitate an escalation of containment measures, a possibility that we all dread. So let us step up together for our motherland. We stand on the precip of a very difficult situation, ladies and gentlemen. And it pays nothing to politicize or to sensationalize it. It is your life and the life of 50 million Kenyans that we are talking about here. If we partner and work together, we can maintain both the health and lives of our people as well as our economy. But if we fail to play our role our individual role, like I said, like it or hate it, my responsibility is to protect life first. We shall and we will do everything that is necessary to prevent what we have seen happen in other countries happen in our country. So ladies and gentlemen, please be honorable, distinguished, and patriotic citizens of your land. Tell your fellow Kenyans. Teach your fellow Kenyans. Nobody enjoys the situation that we are in. But if, and I repeat again, if we are not able, because of our selfishness, individually, to maintain a situation where we are able to protect both life and economy, then, like I said, we have no choice but to protect that 
which we are fundamentally bound to protect under the Constitution, and that is life. So we shall escalate, but we can de-escalate if we work together as Kenyans and we are able to continue life as normally as possible while at the same time protecting each other from the kind of dangers that we have seen happen in countries that are much more advanced than we are. So ladies and gentlemen, let us step together for our motherland, step up for our families, step up for our neighbors, and for our beloved nation, Kenya. Fellow Kenyans, I conclude my address to you with a reflection from the third stanza of our national anthem. May the glory of Kenya and the fruits of our labor fill every heart with thanksgiving this Labor Day. There is no doubt. Without labor, as I said before, there is no prosperity. Labor remains the game changer of all progress, and we must therefore celebrate our workers as creators and makers of things during COVID, but also during good times. I wish you all a happy Labor Day, one full of thanksgiving for the fruits of your labor to the nation this year. Happy, La happy Labor Day. Stay safe. Stay home where possible. God bless you all. And may God bless Kenya. Asante Nisana. Asante sana mheshimiwa rais nitaomba sote sasa tusimame kwa heshima ili tuweze kumaliza maadhimisho yetu kwa wimbo wa taifa Kwa hivyo mtaalika kuwa ya na bendi yetu kutungoza